Welcome back to Free Media. I'm Amber Duke. And I'm Robbie Suave. Well, Comedy Central host Jon Stewart is saying that cancel culture does not exist except if you're a never-Trumper. That's right. Stewart says the only real victims of cancel culture are Republicans who are against MAGA. Let's watch. There is no organized cancel culture conspiracy where even the slightest misstep can 100% get someone on the right canceled. Refuse to buy into Trump's stolen election claims and you'll lose your job like Liz Cheney or countless others. In fact, everything the right says cancel culture does to them is actually being done by MAGA. Hmm, interesting. All right, look, I think there's a lot to get into here. I, I will start by being, in fairness to Jon Stewart, who I substantially disagree with here, I think it is the case that the cancel culture label gets a little bit incoherent when applied to political figures um, themselves who are like, you know, who are supposed to represent a constituency and an ideology. And if they fall out of step with it, they're not going to be able to keep that position. Is that so much cancel culture or is it like the normal functioning of a political economy and a democracy? I, I wouldn't, Liz Cheney is, canceled in that she is absolutely not welcome in the Republican coalition anymore is that, but I, I wouldn't call that cancel culture necessarily. Now, I will say that I find a lot of the very hardcore MAGA Trump people who do complain about cancel culture to be incredibly thin-skinned about criticism of Trump and people in their world when they are, you know, you remember the DeSantis Trump wars. In fact, you were probably more proximate to them than I was. The like bitterness and the, you know, the same people saying well, the left hates other ideas and they don't accept anyone just wanting to utterly destroy people who are on the other side of that debate who like they agree with on 98% of all things um, ends up seeming a little bit rich to me. Yeah, I guess there's been a massive shift in what public perception of cancel culture is. And to me, the definition was always that someone does some, commits some offense and the consequence or punishment for that offense far outweighs the supposed crime. So if someone misspeaks in an office meeting and they're summarily fired and blacklisted from the industry, that would be an example of cancel culture, particularly if they if that happens because of some sort of benign political opinion that they express. And it has really come to mean just consequences for your actions. And right. in John Stewart, obviously, uh, in talking about Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger and these other Republicans who have since been deemed persona non grata in the party, misses the fact that the Democrats do the same thing to people within their party all the time. There's literally one pro-life Democrat, Henry Quaylar, and he is now indicted for um, allegedly taking bribes from the government of Azerbaijan, which Trump claims is because he is the only Democrat who, is, who supports border security. But I think, I think that's probably more likely. But I mean, the point is, is that they've rooted out people based on litmus tests for a long time. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's just the nature of politics. Although it's interesting on the Democratic side to see the diversity on, for instance, on Israel, there is actually a wide range, you know, from the squad, Ilan Omar, AOC, to, you know, Richie Torres and a lot of the leadership on that. But uh, so I agree with you that, yes, cancel culture, I think, can have force as a term when it applies to, uh, yeah, for the re for in the situations you describe. And also, I think it's, it's just best not to apply it to um, political figures and people who are in the domain of having opinions, like, okay, then if you have a bad opinion and your your job and your persona is about saying and dis discussing ideas and if people disagree with them, they're expressing their feedback, I just think that's not cancel culture at all. Where I, I think the term has teeth and there are some really regrettable, regrettable examples are, yes, people who are not accustomed or supposed to like be out there having opinions, um, getting punished for saying or doing something, uh, yeah, maybe in, in the workplace, or it, it's most cruel when it's teenagers or young people, frankly, um, getting in trouble for, you know, in, in their moment of triumph, they get a job or they get an award or they win a game 
uh, years later, and then someone digs up something they tweeted, you know, when they were 14, um, at a time where, you know, when you or I were young, um, before social media, everybody said and did stupid things that is part of the process of being a young person and growing up, but we had the benefit of there was not a running transcript saving, memorizing everything you did or said to be, to be conjured up later in life. And, and that's where I think um, it's, it's mostly really bad. Then there are a couple examples of famous people who are brutally canceled. I, I think Aziz Ansari is the best example of someone who just like actually did have his career ruined or like he had to go underground. He was not been seen in public like there for a many year um, stretch over that article about literally just a bad date he had um, that was so reprehensible. And I think actually a lot of people, like people on the left, middle, everywhere, recognize that that was cancel culture and, and, and frankly, Me Too gone too far. So there are some examples, but the term's gotten a little bit abused. Yeah, I think it's also the case that the left sort of rejects cancel culture because their cancellation attempts aren't always successful. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, see, no, but they didn't actually get canceled. They still have a job. And it's like, okay, but you tried to. Like Josh Allen, when he was drafted into the NFL, did exactly what you're referencing. They dug up old high school tweets, took them out of context, and said, this guy's a racist. And he still got to play in the NFL. He's a, su a successful quarterback for uh, the Buffalo Bills. But that's not to say the left didn't try to yeah. get him kicked out of the NFL. And then there are other cases where it does succeed. There is a young woman who was driving her car through like a BLM protest as she was about to go off to college. And this, uh, this young woman accused her of saying that she was gonna use the protesters at speed bumps, as speed bumps. And I think she either like got kicked out of college or wasn't able to go, something to that effect. And for years was trying to fight this accusation and it did indeed turn out to be false. The young woman who made, yes. who, who made it up admitted that it was not the, true. There were disciplinary actions taken against her. My colleague at Reason, Emma Camp, has followed that story very closely. I think she was actually the first person to write about it. So people watching who are more curious about that should look up Emma Camp's work on that. It was, yeah, it was great. That was a very good example. And there's so many campus examples of just because campuses are so insane places of people, uh, activists, students trying to weaponize these very Byzantine disciplinary processes, which are often not First Amendment compliant, not due process compliant against um, you know other students who they have who they have feuds with, or other professors that they have feuds with, professors saying uh, or you know just reading uncomfortable language from literature or textbooks, getting in trouble by like easily offended students. That's that's all. That's the the, the juicy cancel culture right. stuff, not like. Oh, boohoo! Liz Cheney doesn't have a job anymore, or you know, or someone on the other side, because like it's not. I'm sorry if you're a person in public. Like you know, if they try to cancel me, if they don't like opinion I have on this show or on Rising, like okay, it is my job to have an opinion. Like I, I can. If you don't like what I have to say, you're allowed to vent about it and say Robbie shouldn't work for the Hill or for Reason anymore. I hope you don't, but like it's not. It's not the same thing as if somebody who works at Starbucks um, has you know their tweets exposed and gets fired. Like that, that's yeah, bad. Yeah, that's definitely worse. I don't know, I have been fired from a job for <laughs> like a bad opinion, so. That's true, you had, you had a joke <laughs> that I thought was very funny uh, and you did get fired. Yeah, I did. I got fired by a soulless corporation. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad to have you here anyway. Thank you. More free media right after this.